Hey, it's Daryl. Team Common is currently working on our transition to a weekly show. We'll be back this summer with new episodes. In the meantime, here's one from our archives. WBUR Podcasts, Boston. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and you're listening to The Common. Diddy Coley, welcome back to The Common. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming through. You are a Boston Globe reporter, and you have one hell of a story for us. I cannot wait to talk with you about it. So here we go. People in their 20s make up a fifth of Boston. Do I got that right? That's right. And you found that many are feeling like it's impossible to survive here financially. That's because you talk to dozens of members of Gen Z. <laughs> you talk to yes. them to get an idea of the financial challenges they face, what's keeping them here, and what could drive them out. When I read the piece, you know, one thing that comes to mind for me is that Boston is tough for a lot of people, right? So my first question for you is, why focus on Gen Z specifically? Was it something personal? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think that as a business reporter, you know, touching on inflation and the economy every day, I see the financial impacts on people across races, across income, across, you know, geographic boundaries in New England, suffering with the cost of living. Mm -hmm. But the reason I wanted to focus on this age group is because, well, one, I'm in this age group. You know, I moved to Boston five years ago to go to college, then decided to settle in the city after. And, you know, of course, there's a usual outflow of college graduates in the city. Not everyone who goes to school here is going to stay. But mm -hmm. I was increasingly encountering people in my own life in their early 20s who expressed an interest in Boston. They wanted to find jobs here. They wanted to build a life here. Maybe one day they wanted to buy a home here. And those kinds of people were leaving in my own life. And I was mm -hmm. like, what's driving this trend? And what does this mean for the city, really? And so I decided to kind of, you know, step out of the boundaries of my own life and ask people that maybe I never would talk to otherwise, who are in just a vast array of careers and professions, you know, technology, arts, advocacy, media, and ask them what they think. And what I really came away with is that everyone is dealing with the same problem. It's not just me. Now, you talk to more than two dozen people, right? Is there one story in particular that stuck with you? Yeah, I think the story that really stuck with me was Hassan Page. He grew up in Boston. He grew up in Roxbury. And then his family struggled with homelessness when he was a teenager around 16. So they moved to Florida, you know, where they were kind of able to rebuild their life a little bit. But he really missed Boston. One, you know, culturally, he wanted to be in the city, but he also was doing the math and realized that he could probably make more money here. So he came back. Mm -hmm. He lives in a home in Dorchester with seven of his cousins and several animals, including an entire litter of cats, which is pretty incredible. <laughs> um, and he's taking server shifts. He does youth mentorship. And his goal is to really be a model and an actor. And there's just more of that work here than where he was in Florida. But now he's mm -hmm. essentially given himself a year's deadline to be able to stay because the math is just not adding up. He pays very little in rent in comparison to most Bostonians, $200 a month, because he lives with so many people and because he's with family. But still, everything is so expensive that he barely puts any money away, if any at all, every month. Mm. And I think that's really interesting because it's such a classic story. of Someone who's from here, wants to be here, is pursuing their dream as an early 20-something. But this is just not a place where you can feasibly pursue your dreams a lot of the times anymore. Mm -hmm. What are some of the reasons people feel like they might need to leave the city? Yeah. So I eventually ended up breaking down the story in three parts, which was housing, savings and debt. So some of that is predictable. You know, yeah. people know that the cost of housing is astronomical here, rent mm -hmm. or home buying, mm -hmm. but also just 
a lot of people were talking about day-to-day expenses, the cost of essentials in Boston, the cost of having a good time in Boston, and really the cost of putting money away because people were starting to feel like even if they were squirreling away at their debt, if they were squirreling away at you know their emergency savings goal, that money doesn't go as far here because of how expensive it can be. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about savings. You mentioned in your reporting that people under 25 are saving earlier and saving more than their predecessors, but almost a quarter of these folks feel like they will never have the funds to retire or reach those traditional financial milestones, right? What's behind this? I think in generations past, and of course I can't speak to this from lived experience, but in my research and reporting you know, over the years, people were saving with a really specific intention. You know, you start saving at 23 and maybe in five years you can afford a home. You'll have the down payment for it. God bless those folks. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And and like, I wish that was me, but I think increasingly people are just dealing with such a high level of existentialism and uncertainty about the money Mm -hmm. that they're putting away, particularly if you're thinking Gen Z. Right now, that's people essentially under 26. All of those folks have came of age during the pandemic, during an era of high inflation, an era where it seems like the threat of a recession is around the corner all the time. So Mm -hmm. these people are putting away more money. But it's kind of unclear what they're actually saving towards because everything that, like you said, is in that traditional financial milestone category isn't really achievable for us in the next couple of years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And listen, a little secret for you, as an OG millennial, it's real. <laughs> us too. <laughs> yeah, us no, too. really, exactly. <laughs> and I think that's part of the, the point of the story too, is that it, this is not the first generation that it's happening to, but mm-hmm. as time goes on, it, it seems like the problem continues to get worse. Mm-hmm. Tell me, what does that look like in people's day-to-day lives? Like, where mm-hmm. are they cutting back? What are they sacrificing? G- give us that sense. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking savings, you know, one of the folks in that part of the story Her name is Sophie Mark Ng. You know, she's a resident of Somerville. She lives in a two bedroom apartment with her sister and she actually grew up in the area. She grew up in North Cambridge where her parents own a home. But even, you know, with all of the financial advantages that she's been given in that sense and all of the support that she has so close to home, she really feels like the money that she's putting away isn't going anywhere. I mean, she is very frugal. She eats at home a lot. She's saving on her rent. She has a, you know, a pretty good pandemic era deal. Mm. And she said something to me like, I'm saving because it feels like what I'm supposed to do, but I don't really know what that means for me. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more from Diddy. Politics has never been stranger or more online, which is why the politics team at Wired is making a new show, Wired Politics Lab. It's all about how to navigate the endless stream of news and information and what to look out for. Each week on the show, we'll dig into far-right platforms, AI chatbots, influencer campaigns, and so much more. Wired Politics Lab launches Thursday, April 11th. Follow the show wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back. Diddy, what do you think it tells us when Gen Z at all income levels are struggling with this, you know, with with what it means to live in the city? Hmm. I think that's a really good question, because what I came away from the story from is that it's it doesn't really matter if you make forty thousand dollars a year or as one of the sources does almost $200,000 a year, because even folks who make a lot more money are essentially doing a cost benefit analysis of what it means to live in the city. They Mm -hmm. have the money that you need to live here, but you can get so much less here than either some of these other big cities that maybe have bigger cultural contributions, nightlife, arts, things like that. So they're flocking there and willing to spend their money 
or they're going to cities that just cost less overall, where they can get, you know, more bang for their buck, essentially. And I think it says a lot when people, regardless of how much money they make, don't really see a future here. Mm, Yeah. And I mean, I should be clear when I say all income levels, I mean, you know, you covered a wide spectrum. You talk to folks mm-hmm. who make 45000 a year, and you talk to people who made almost 200000 a year. So now let's switch gears. Mm-hmm. Debt. Let's talk about debt. How much debt does the average person under 25 have? Those numbers are a little unclear um, mm-hmm. because it's hard because usually that data is done like 29 and younger. So getting like a 26 Gen Z view is a Mm -hmm. little bit difficult. But, you know, Massachusetts has a pretty large amount of student debt because we have a highly educated population, you know, and so I think the medium number is around $18,000 of student loan debt and the average is around $35,000, which is a lot of money. It's less money than some other places, but Also, just the proportion of our population that has gone to college is so much higher. So folks are really drowning in that. And they're really looking forward to the potential of having that debt canceled, which is currently up in the air with a proposal from President Biden. But Mm -hmm. if that doesn't happen, it automatically sets a lot of people back because the cost of tuition is just growing and growing year over year. Mm -hmm. And also because folks are coming of age, finding their financial footing, And like I said, a time of such high inflation, they're also racking up credit card debt to just make it work. Diddy, with all that said, what are people weighing in their decision to stay or leave? They're weighing cost versus community. A lot of the times, the reason people are willing to pay more money to live in a city is because of all the amenities that they offer. You know, they Mm -hmm. live so close to their friends, they get to go out, they get to eat, they get to have some of these high powered jobs that are only available in cities like Boston. But increasingly, all of the benefits that come with living in Boston are not worth the price tag for a lot of folks I spoke with. I mean, for example, Jody Carilla, she's a um, 24-year-old landscape architect who lives in Cambridge with a couple of her friends. She moved here after college. She went to Worcester Polytechnic Institute. And she said that she doesn't think any of her friends are going to be living in Boston after two years because they're going to take jobs in other cities that maybe pay more. They're just going to go move to another place that costs less money. And that's really tough because she really loves it here and she would like to stay. Yeah, because if I can't thrive here, then I can't move around and explore the city and really set my roots down and get to know it. And, you know, when you think about Gen Z, you know, your generation, you know, you guys are the one that's out partying at night, right? Like you're going to the (laughs) clubs and and doing all the things and and keeping things busy and lively, right? So, you, you know, you bring that excitement. And if you can't, do that here to the extent that you could do it somewhere else, you know what I mean? Then, you know, you just, the city suffers because of that. Exactly. This is the root of a, of a big economic, but also a big societal and cultural issue that Boston is now dealing with because the city will really, really lose out. Boston will become older, richer, and less accessible unless we start to make action on this, you know, today. Well, Diddy, I got to say, you know, the story was really cool. You covered a lot. And then (laughs) you and the Globe, you know, created this build out online. There's even a calculator that folks can use to see, you know, where they are financially in Boston. Everybody should check it out. It is really dope. And so with that, Diddy, thank you so very much for coming by the comment. This was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. That's Boston Globe reporter Diddy Coley. And that's our show for today. Thank you so much for listening to The Common. If you have any thoughts on this episode, please, please, please hit us up on Instagram at WBUR The Common. You can also send us an email at thecommon at WBUR.org. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.